We all want to keep ourselves and our families safe from crime. We're fortunate to have as our guest today a member of the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office who will be sharing with us some crime prevention tips and strategies. I'm Grace Trafton of The Better Part. Stay tuned. <music> Sam Gore has been a deputy sheriff with the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office for the past three years and has held prior positions in court security and patrol. Welcome, Sam. First, tell us about the uh, Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office. The Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office has been around since 1850, making it one of the oldest law enforcement agencies in California. We maintain various contracts with cities and agencies throughout the, the county, one of which is, is, is city contracts. We have a contract to provide law enforcement services to the city of Cupertino, the city of Saratoga, and the town of Los Altos Hills. We also have a contract with Valley Transportation Authority, which is the county's public, public transit system, and also the riders on the public transit, and also the Santa Clara County State Parks, which includes uh, 17 parks, one of which is Henry Coe State Park, which is the, the largest state park in the state of California. Uh, part of the sheriff's office is separate into two divisions. Uh, one division is what's called the custody division, which manages and supervises the jails that we have in the county and also the inmates. Currently we have about an average population of about 4,000 inmates, making it the fifth largest jail system in the state of California. Mm. On the other side of the sheriff's office, we have the enforcement side, so which includes regular deputies uh, and also patrol deputies, and it also has other special specialized uh, units that include the, the CERT team, which is also known as the SWAT team. We have a bomb squad. We, have a, we have a, also have a helicopter. We have a canine unit. We have a dive team, also underwater search and rescue mm. team, mm. and uh, various other, uh, for example, high-tech crimes units uh, to investigate high-tech crimes. Mm -hmm. So that sounds very similar to the police department. So how does it differ from a police department? Right. When you make a comparison with the sheriff's office and a police department, we're virtually the same. We have the same training, and we're also sworn to uphold the same same penal codes in, in California. Uh, the only difference is that there, there are some units that are different. For example, the sheriff's office has what's called a, a civil and warrants division, which is when somebody is, is found uh, in, in another state and, and the crime happened in our jurisdiction. What happens was that we have sheriff's deputies that will go to other states uh, back east and extradite uh, those people back here where they could be tried in court uh, whereas police departments they don't have that type of that division oh I see right. okay so let's talk about uh, some of the scams that are going around uh, unfortunately some criminals are targeting the elderly who are the most vulnerable segment of our society one of the most common one is the grandparent scam can you tell us about this one sure the grandparent scam has been around for a few years uh, what happens kind of a short summary of what happens is is the bad guy would would make a phone call they'll obtain your phone your phone number through uh, either dumpster diving which is going through your garbage or just getting it online or various other maybe social networking type type sites so they get your phone number and they'll call you and they'll ask you hi grandma uh, this is your grandson and in response uh, the victim would say oh Johnny is that you and so now they know more information to use uh, basically to to try to trick you so they use the, the, the name, you know, Johnny as the, their grandson because they gain that information. And they'll, they'll, they'll make up a story saying that maybe they're back east in a city and they've just been arrested or they have to go to court and they have judge fees or attorney fees. Or they'll make up some sort of, some sort of a lie in order to, to gain your trust and in the end get money from you. So what happens with, with that? After they gain your trust and they find out that you are able to be scammed, They'll, they'll tell you directions on how to deliver money to them. And a lot of times they'll do what's called the gift card. Uh, so they'll, they'll tell you directions to go to a local store. Uh, it's usually like a, a Walgreens or a Rite Aid or maybe even a Walmart. And they'll ask you to purchase these gift cards and they'll ask for the password on the back of the gift card uh, for you to send it to them. How is it that people will fall for the scam? Don't they recognize their grandson's voice on the phone? Right, a lot of times 
they'll they'll hit you at the most vulnerable moment so which is maybe at two three o'clock a.m in the morning when you're sleeping oh. so they'll call you and they'll say you know grandma I, ne I need help this you know this is an emergency and they'll they'll play off the fear in in, in the worst fear of, of a grandparent's uh, a nightmare is if their their grandkids are arrested or something happened to them bad and and these scams can take on different types of stories uh, they could be saying that they're in a hospital and they need money for medical bills. Um, so a lot of these, what I recommend people to do if they do get one of these phone calls is do the research. Call call other family members to see if that if the grandson or, and they can use different names for the relatives. It could be their son or it could be a, a cousin or a nephew or niece. Um, and at the end, if they really are unsure about it, call the sheriff's office and, and we could help you through this mm -hmm. scam. Or even just call the grandson to see whether he's actually back east or in Mexico in a jail. Exactly. Now there's also uh, lottery scams. We should probably remember that if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Tell us what typically happens with the scam. Right, with the lottery scams, and they either contact you either over phone or email. Uh, most of the times I've seen is over email. They'll say that you know, you've been entered into, and they'll use mostly a, a foreign country. I, I've seen it as the UK. So they say you entered into the UK, grand lottery and you've been selected as a winner to win for example two thousand dollars and it doesn't matter the dollar amount they they're just making up this whole story uh you know you've been one you've been awarded this two thousand dollars however in order to to take this money or in order for us to give this money you have to pay bank transfer fees mm -hmm. or attorney fees or any kind don't make up mm -hmm. you know, the list goes on and so they try to gain your trust in this thinking okay if i pay this two hundred dollars i could gain two thousand mm -hmm. dollars so th they'll get that, and then the same, it's the same, uh, same method. They'll, they'll try to get you to get a gift card or send a wire transfer. But trace. don't people know that they did not enter into a lottery in the UK? Right. 99% of the population, they, f they, they catch on to that. It's a scam. I get those same phone calls and those same emails, too, and my family members get those, and I, I tell them about that. Right. So what precautions can we take to avoid being scammed? Yeah. Well, like you mentioned, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. If you never entered into an international lottery, which I've never heard of an international lottery, nobody will contact you via email or over the phone. Right, They'll right. most likely show up to your door. And if you have any questions, you can always, always con talk to a friend or a family member, somebody that you trust. And at the end, if, if you still are unsure about it, call the sheriff's office at our non-emergency number, and we'll be happy to help you through it and, and see if this is really a scam, which most likely it is. Right. Um, what about the scammer who claims to be from the utilities company and they're threatening to shut off your services because of lack of payment? Mm. Unfortunately, just recently I did uh, come across a case with this where a business owner was scammed out of over $8,000 mm. uh, because of this. So what happened was the business owner just purchased this business a few months ago mm -hmm. and they knew that the prior owner had a lot of problems with utilities and rent and taxes and things that go on with, with the business. <coughs> so that he was aware of issues going on. So when this phone call came in, they, they presented themselves from PG from a utility company mm -hmm. saying that you owe back taxes because of you know electricity or water or any whatever the utilities they go through before you do anything, before you because in that case, they really instilled a fear into that business right. owner saying that we are going to shut off utilities. Right. And him running a business that's open 24 hours right. a day, seven days a week, he didn't want you know the loss of business and loss of customers exactly. because of that. So they played into the fear of Oh, of what a person. shame. Do you ever catch these people? Unfortunately, it, it is difficult because a lot of these people are either from back east or from international, from other countries. A foreign countries. Right. So it is very difficult. With phone numbers, they are non-traceable. They have a phone number that's linked to another phone number that's linked to a server, and it's it's very difficult to trace. Mm -hmm. Now, there's another kind of scam, which is uh, mortgage scams. Now, with the mortgage crisis we faced in the past few years, criminals have tried to take advantage of homeowners who are looking um, for mortgage specials and lower payments. How, how do these scams work? Right, and this is also very common, and you see on, on TV commercials, they have the, these type of uh, mortgage specials. Just, I just want to remind the viewers that just because it's on TV and maybe there's a, a representative that it's famous or it's known on TV, mm -hmm. doesn't mean it, it's real. 
with these mortgage scams, a lot of them are on TV commercials, uh, and maybe they have a, a representative or a host that is a famous person, maybe on TV, or that you recognize them from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And just be aware that just because there is a an actor or somebody that you recognize on TV endorsing these type of, of products, it might not be, be the real thing. Good point. Um, so with these mortgage scams, they offer a lot of different th different specials. For example, trying to lower your mortgage rates, mm -hmm. or try to try to get you to refinance in order to you know reverse mortgage and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, the first thing you do is you want to make sure that you you talk to your loan consultant where your original mortgage came from mm -hmm. and ask them about that. Uh, they're the ones that helped you in the in the first place, and you know they'll continue to help you. Um, a lot of times with these mortgage specials, they'll also ask for upfront fees. Ah. So they'll try to get you, well, in order, you know, they'll tell the victim, well, in order for us to help you, you have to pay, you know, for example, a couple hundred dollars in order just for an upfront fee so that we can come out to your house and talk to you. Mm -hmm. But the reality is they won't come to your house. They just want your money. So once you wire the money or, or maybe you pay the money right. via ma ma money order, um, there is no real person. It's just the person that, that came up with this idea and basically knows how to manipulate people over the phone. Mm -hmm. Um, another thing too is they'll also use a lot of fancy abbreviations mm. um, in order to, to try to trick you into thinking that they are from a, a government endorsed uh, company or, or a business entity. Um, and also, and a, a, a thing that happened to me too is with my mortgage loan, it was also, and it's very common too, where mortgage loans are sold to other loan companies. Right. And so uh, in the past few weeks, I, I did receive a, a letter saying that your mortgage loan has been sold to an, this new company. Mm -hmm. And I never heard about this company, so I did my own research. I went online, and I saw that it was a, a valid company. But for me to completely make sure that my, my loan has been sold to this new company was I called my old mortgage loan company and confirmed with them huh. that, in fact, that it was sold to this. And in right. this case, it, it was. So please make sure that your prior loan company has... Right. has already given you the heads up on, on what's happening with your loan. Yeah, that's really, really good advice. Now, let's move on to another scam. Um, another one that's fairly common is the IRS scam, uh, some of which are particularly aggressive. Uh, tell us about these and how can we avoid getting victimized? Mm. When I talk to victims, a lot of times they're afraid of of two agencies. First of all, the law enforcement agency, mm -hmm. because no, obviously nobody wants to get in trouble with the law mm -hmm. or be arrested. Mm -hmm. The second is the IRS. Right. So that when I talk to victims, they're always scared. Once they hear the word IRS, right. they know that they could, you know, possibly face face uh, federal charges or you know tax, which you see in the news. Mm -hmm. um, but with the IRS scams, it, it comes through the same. Um, they'll either be emailed or through the phone, and most likely, what I've been hearing lately is through the phone. Mm -hmm. And it always happens around tax time. Right. Um, so you're looking at January through April where everybody's getting ready to right. file their taxes and they'll call you and say you know they'll make up a bogus story saying you haven't paid taxes or you haven't paid enough taxes uh, in the last few years and they already have a lot of your information because they did research or either online or did you know garbage diving through your garbage mm -hmm. and they know your your name or your date of birth mm -hmm. and a lot of times they'll ask you maybe they have your name and they'll say grace uh, can you confirm your your social security number with me because mm -hmm. I want to make sure that you are grace so what happens with the victim will, will give them the social security number. Now the bad guy has your name and social security number, and the bad guy will con continue to try to pull out more information mm -hmm. from you, saying, you know, we do also have to have you to confirm your date of birth. Can you confirm your date of birth? Because I'm not sure if you are Grace, because this is over the phone. Well, in fact, you're not, you haven't done nothing to confirm that they are actually the IRS. Right. So you have to make sure that you're doing your research on both ends and mm -hmm. never give information over the phone. A lot of times they'll, they'll ask you to get these money orders and then send it to them. Um, and I can give you more information on how to verify the, if these money orders are scams or, or, or the real thing. Um, and in one ca the last case that I had, I had a victim call the sheriff's office because she was smart. She knew that this was a scam, but she just wanted to see how much information she can get from, from the scammer that was on the phone. So she was, in fact, just playing around or toying with them. Um, and But I recommend... If you get a phone call like this, just hang up. And if they mm. call again, just right. hang up again. And then if, if they continuously harass you with phone calls, call the sheriff's office and a deputy can and talk to you about how to stop these, these phone calls from happening. So in this, this case that we had from this victim, uh, she mentioned that she, she, she was kind of digging into the, the scammer just mm -hmm. to find out, well, you know, what she asked the question, well, what, what, tax, what tax laws am I violating? Mm -hmm. And the scammer said, well, ma'am, you are in violation of tax law number one, number two, and number three. So the victim found out, oh, that was interesting. 
Uh, can you explain what those tax laws are? What is tax law one, two, and three? Which mm -hmm. just sounds very generic to us. Right, right. And the scammer said, well, it's, you know, tax law number one is owing back taxes. Tax law number two is not paying enough taxes in the year 2013. And they just come up with, and, and mm -hmm. the victim told me that she could hear the uneasiness about his voice because it, it apparently to her, it didn't seem like he, he was rehearsed in this type of how to answer. Right. What, um, let's move on to a different kind of scam, which is um, involving the immigration services. That's been, immigration has been in the news a lot lately. So what should people look for, um, look out for with immigration problems? Right. Our county has a population, population of 1.8 million people, which that population also swells during the daytime because of commuters coming to our county in the heart of Silicon Valley. So we have a population of over 2 million people during the day. Um, and a lot of this population comes from overseas. We have a, lot, a large immigrant population. Uh, according to the Registrar of Voters, we do have, they, they print election ballots in, in five different languages. Uh, so that shows how, how very diverse our county is. Right. So with the, with the diversity of our county, we have people from other countries uh, that just immigrated here. Maybe their English isn't very well, and they don't, they're not uh, very knowledgeable on the laws here, and maybe they don't have English-speaking friends that they can turn to uh, regarding this. So with the immigration scams, they'll call up on the phone, and a lot of times they'll use the same person with the same background as the victim. So they'll speak their same language, saying that this is an immigration officer from you know, either the Border Patrol, or they'll make up a name from the government, a public entity, saying that um, you know, you're here whether illegally or you haven't done the right visas or they'll come up with whatever lie mm -hmm. and they'll, they'll scare this person into thinking that they are a real government official mm -hmm. and that you must pay money in order to, to fix, fix this problem and then you know, the, the government entity or the so-called government mm -hmm. entity will not bother them anymore. And it goes through the same. They'll ask them to go get a gift card or they'll send them, get them to send money through a wire transfer through the bank. Mm -hmm. So the, the person calling is speaking the language. Right, I've had person. right. I've had instances from victims saying that this person was speaking the same. It could it was the same village, uh, same sorry, the same language, and also the same dialect. Ah. That, so it was amazing. So this person really was, was felt at ease because it was right. somebody from their hometown. Right. So I understand that there's also romance schemes. Now, how does that work? Romance schemes. Uh, I came across this last year. So there's a lot of dating websites, um, either for for middle-aged people or also senior citizens that are looking for a dating relationship or, or friendship online. So there are a lot of romance uh, websites out there and a lot of international websites uh, that, that try to contact international people with, with Americans. And so with these romance scams is they'll, they'll put up fake pictures. So for example, if there's an American male here and they receive an email or they're, they're on this website and they, they start chatting with somebody and this person says that maybe they're in another country and they start sending pictures and these pictures look real and they're most likely of a of a very pretty in this case a very pretty woman and they're saying that you know their, their name is Jenny and, and you know they're looking for marriage and they want to mm -hmm. have kids and basically they're just feeding into what the victim is wanting so a lot of these websites, these dating websites, the victim already put a profile as far as what they're interested in. And these bad guys, they'll read the profile and they'll think, okay, this person likes cars, for example, or, or is they're looking for marriage. So they'll play into that, that, that vulnerability in the victim saying, but I need money in order for me to apply for a visa from my country. And then also, and once they get that, they'll also play into the, the vulnerability vulnerability of trying to say, you know, I need to buy an airplane ticket because mm -hmm. I want to meet you. And they'll right. continuously send pictures which are right. false. Right. And a lot of times, even though you believe that they're talking to a female, a lot of times it's, it's a male person right. internationally in yeah. another form. So let's talk about identity theft because it's one of the fastest growing crimes in the U.S. with more than 13 million victims each year. So what can we do to prevent this from happening to us? ID theft is one of the fastest growing crimes in the in the US there's over 13 million victims per year and the reason why it's one of the fastest growing crimes is because it's easy it can be done remotely meaning the person doesn't have to be here to steal your money and it's 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 very difficult to track for law enforcement agencies so we could have somebody from the East Coast uh, trying to using your your personal information your name date of birth and Social Security in order to open up credit card accounts or loan accounts in order to purchase a car or home, uh, but most commonly we've seen it as opening up credit card accounts. And once they get your credit card, th they're 
you know they're they're free to use it at any retail store or, or purchasing goods for themselves. Um, so what I what I tell people is to prevent this from happening by running a credit uh, credit check through the th the through the three main bureaus uh, in the U.S. and the three main bureaus are Experian. Uh, TransUnion and Equifax, and those can all be found online. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I just ran my s ran my own name and my own personal information mm -hmm. to run a credit history check on myself and my wife, just to make sure that all the credit card accounts that are open in my name are in fact open by myself or my wife. Um, another thing that you can do to open to check your credit history is to go on on the website annualcreditreport.com. Mm -hmm. That is the only federally mandated website where people can use and get free credit reports. So it's federally mandated that you're allowed one free credit report mm -hmm. per year through this website, mm -hmm. through each of the credit bureaus, the, the three credit bureaus mm -hmm. that I mentioned. Uh, so technically you can do a credit check on yourself every four months uh, through those, uh, just selecting a, a different credit mm -hmm. uh, bureau. And there's also a phone number, it's the one 322 8228 Mm -hmm. And that's the annualcreditreport.com uh, website that people can contact t in order to get a free credit report, uh, either mailed to them or, or sent to them uh, via email. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think it's worthwhile to sign up for one of the uh, identity theft pr protection services? Mm -hmm. w with, these, with these services, they, they can't do anything where a person can. Mm -hmm. So everything that they can provide you, a, a person can do it themselves. It's just the ease and the time. So maybe you're, you know, if you're busy working a lot and you don't have a lot of time, these services might be good. Mm -hmm. But if you have a lot of time and you want to do it yourself, you can do that too. And it's there's it's the same thing. Th what they'll do is they'll they can put fraud alerts on your account to mm -hmm. see if there's if there's any uh, new credit card accounts open or loan mm -hmm. accounts open. They'll contact you to make sure that you opened it and not somebody else mm -hmm. from overseas or from another part of the, part of the country. It, it's either way, um, but a lot of times these services will charge upfront fees. So just be prepared if, and if that outweighs the, the time involved for you to, to do a credit check on yourself or put a fraud alert on with the credit bureaus, then it might be, it might be a good idea. And what about mail theft? That's still happening. Right, mail theft is very common just because it's easy. So in our jurisdiction, we have a lot of mailboxes where it's not locking mailboxes right. or it's not mailboxes that go into the home. So they're just the freestanding mailboxes right. that anybody can open. So what these guys will do, is they'll, they'll drive around, they have a, there's a car full of people, so most, you know, two or more, they'll have a driver and the person, will, the passenger seat will just open their window and go down the street opening up the mailboxes and taking out mail. And luckily, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll get a, a piece of mail that has a credit card, maybe, maybe that homeowner asked for a secondary credit card mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. to replace the one that they lost and they'll, boom, that's bingo for them. Mm -hmm. They'll use that credit card, they'll activate it and they'll, they'll go on a spending spree. Um, and also they'll, they'll also obtain uh, other personal information like your social security number mm -hmm. and your date of birth and also other maybe other letters from family members so they could find out personal information. Another problem people may face is home and vehicle burglaries. What should we be looking out for and how do we report any suspicious activity? What I advise people to do is because they live in that area, they know who belongs where and neighbors and things like that. If they see a suspicious, suspicious car that doesn't belong in the area or sus suspicious people that are walking in and out of a maybe a side gate or, or hanging out in the front of a house where they know that neighbors maybe at work or on vacation, please report that. Okay. Also note down any other things that you see, maybe a car license plate, the make and model and color of the vehicle. What the, what the subjects are doing? Are they just standing there? Or do they have tools? Maybe they're you know a gardening crew or things like that. Or are they walking in the back of the house? So if they're walking back in, in the back of the house, it's it's a big red flag for us. So please report that okay. and tell the dispatch that what they see. Basically, paint the picture for for deputies that are arriving on scene. So be really aware of what's going on. Exactly. And what are some of the things that we can do to protect our our home and our property? There's numerous things that you can do to protect your home first of all, there's an alarm system that that people can install mm -hmm. um, but remember it's only as as strong as as when you use it so there's a lot of homeowners that maybe there are victims of burglary home burglaries that forget to turn on the alarm or, mm. or maybe just they're in a rush to go to work so they right. don't turn on alarm so the alarm system is no good it's basically your house doesn't have an alarm so that's the first thing uh, the second thing is maybe installing a, a surveillance or a security camera i know i have that in my house because i was also a victim of a home burglary oh, really? uh, a few years back and um, the third thing is to do is to 
is to get to know your neighbors or get to right. know of a, a community neighborhood watch for right. them. I think that's the best way. I'm, I have a close relationship with my neighbor that lives right next to me. And I told mm -hmm. him that when I was going on vacation, hey, you know, I'm going on vacation. Right. You know, if something happens, here's my phone number. Feel free to give me a call. And if, if there's something that's really out of the ordinary, please do call the police department and, or the sheriff's office right. and, and let them know that what's happening uh, so that you know, he can help me look over uh, my property. How about our cars, our vehicles? What can we do to protect them? Right. So when you park your vehicle, make sure you park in a, a well-lit area, in a, in a common area where there's a lot of people passing by. Mm -hmm. uh, on the vehicle burglaries that I've been into, or a lot of my partners have been on, uh, the vehicles have always been parked in secluded areas where it may be in the corner of a lot, mm -hmm. maybe there's shade over there. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, myself as a driver too, I like to park in the shade. Right. But also, th when you leave your car, make sure you lock all your lock, doors, right. roll up all the windows, and also hide valuables, or the best thing to do is take your valuables with you. Every car that I've been, br that I've been on scene that has been broken into. Something has been taken because something was in plain view. Right. Um, I've actually had a case where a bag, a backpack was taken, and inside the backpack was just a bunch of clothes. Ah. And because the ber the the person, the suspect, saw the, the bag there and saw right. it was a nice backpack, and they thought maybe a laptop or right. maybe a phone was inside, some electronic, some something worth of value. So when they took that backpack, I'm sure they opened it and just saw a bunch of clothes that were of no use. Well, that's very good advice, and thank you so much for some very, very important information today. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me, Grace. I hope you found today's program informative, and be sure to remember to watch our shows on YouTube. Thank you for being with us today, and be safe. See you next week. Bye-bye.